All right, people, this is Harris Sultan, and another funny incident happened in Lahore. I'm calling it funny because it didn't turn deadly, but it could have been a lot uglier than what it turned out to be. So as you guys know, Pakistan is the capital of blasphemy. And by that, I mean that you hear more cases of lynching, killings, arrests of people accused of blasphemy in Pakistan than any other country. And this time it happened in Lahore. You might have heard of it because it was so ridiculous that it made global headlines. So a woman who used to live in Dubai, so obviously she is familiar with Arabic. So she wore a dress with some Arabic inscriptions on it. And... She's walking around in this interior part of the city, which is not really that affluent. It's, it's a very backward area of Lahore. So she's walking around uh, this market called Ichra Market with her husband. And then some clerics or people who look like clerics, they have beards. Well, every second Pakistani has a beard these days. So he walks up to her and he says, hey, you're blaspheming against our religion. You have Quranic verses inscripted on your dress. And now you're sitting on it, meaning you're putting your bum on it. Therefore, this is blasphemy. And then they started creating a scene. A lot of people gathered. Some people said nearly 300 people surrounded her. And then they also called another guy who they thought was a cleric. They asked him to come over and tell us what it is. And when he came, you know what he said? He said, you need to take it off right now. <laughs> so they wanted her to undress herself right in front of everyone. So she started crying. You can see she was clearly distressed and she didn't know what to do. Initially, apparently she resisted. So long story short, uh, they interviewed that cleric later on. The cleric couldn't even read or write anything, let alone Arabic. So anyway, so all this commotion is taking place. 300 people are there. Some people have knives in their hands. And then this brave Pakistani instant overnight hero of a woman turns up she delivers a very passionate speech as you can see but you, i'm not going to play it because it's in urdu she delivers a very passionate speech and she gets the woman out of there that was and and then when she got her out of there she took her to the local police station and then something terrible happened there as well look at these clerics these clerics say oh well we have forgiven her <laughs> Forgiven her for what? What has she done? And then they made her apologize to the whole country as well, saying that, oh, look, I'm sorry if it hurts your religious feelings. The moral of the story is Pakistan is so terrible now. They used to kill people. They used to arrest people for actually committing a blasphemy. Now, if other people even feel that you may be committing blasphemy, you could be killed. Now, this woman could have been killed. Eyewitnesses have said that there were so many people. Some of those people had actually brought knives with them and she could have been lynched. <laughs> Inshallah. And we all know what happened to Mishal Khan. We all know what happened to the Sri Lanka citizen, Priyanka Kumara. I'll include the links in the description of this video. So this blasphemy thing is getting out of hand. I've been saying this for a very long time, that everyone is going to get in, engulfed in the flames of blasphemy that they lit up in Pakistan. Because it's no longer limited to non-Muslims, like Asia Bibi, who wasted 10 years of her life just because she told a Muslim that, hey, why can I not drink from the same cup as you? And then she was accused of blasphemy and she was in prison for like 10 years. Eventually she was released and she went to Canada. So initially they used to use that against non-Muslims in Pakistan. But now mainstream Sunni people can be accused of that. So that's what happens. There's a saying in Urdu and Hindi that when you dig a hole for someone, one day you're going to fall in it 
yourself. So that's what's happening. So that brave policewoman who also herself could have been lynched in that kind of situation, it has happened before. We have seen people who are accused of blasphemy getting lynched right in front of the police and the police doesn't do anything because they're, they're too scared. But this woman came in, she delivered a very passionate speech. She said, we will deliver justice, you know, we'll properly investigate, you know, that kind of stuff that police officers say and when they have no intention of doing anything. But anyway, so she's been interviewed by DWTV. Have a listen to what she had to say. She was trembling like uh, any other victim would. Fear itself is a natural phenomenon. The first response that we had when we looked at the scenario was that we have to disperse the crowd enough to make way for ourselves, enough to ensure that the stove which is burning right in front of the shop is not used as a material to cause or set fire to the shop. And the third is to get the woman out as soon as possible. That's how she got him out. And, the, and then on the other side of the camera, there were around 300 people. They were all chanting, behead those who insult Islam. No, no, they actually said behead those who insult Muhammad. Muhammad was not even in that. So they covered up her dress. This is, this is it. That was the actual dress. Look, apparently it looks like Quranic verses to them. Because Pakistanis don't know Arabic, Pakistanis think anything that is written in Arabic is, is holy. <laughs> That's how stupid they are. And funnily enough, this dress was actually made in Kuwait. Even the designer issued a statement saying something like, oh, you know, this is not the Quran, you idiots. This one says halwa. Halwa means beautiful, basically. But it's just the Arabic calligraphy. But because Pakistanis are converted Muslims, anything that's written in Arabic, they just kiss it and put it on the top shelf. I was like, what would you do if it's got poop written on it? If it's got a pig written on it, they will still kiss it and put it on the top shelf. That's what happens to these people. Bengali anti-urinal messages were replaced with Arabic ones instead. Same message, holier language. The results were astounding. Public urination stopped in those places and we found a smart solution to a foul problem permanently. Let's talk about the fact that she was. She said that I'm not going to change my clothes. She was strong enough to state that they are not gods on earth. And they gathered a mob around her to pursue her or to force her into changing or coerce her into changing her clothes. And whatever ensued later on, the public defamation, the use of mobile phones, the fact that they made her videos, the society should think twice after this incident of doing something of this sort, because they have rendered this woman in a very traumatic state of mind that she'll be fighting probably for the rest of her life. But another problem here is that there were only two or three people who actually instigated this. People who just chanted that, oh, she's committing blasphemy. Oh, look at this. She's insulting our holy Quran. You can't even sit down because you're putting a bum on these Arabic inscriptions. Those people should be arrested. They should make an example out of them. But Pakistan is a, it's a peculiar country. They know that this fire is getting out of hand. They know this. But the Pakistani establishment wants to keep it contained because they know that they can use it later on. They have used that against democratically elected governments in the past. It's like their own Frankenstein monster that they still believe that they can control it. Giving a complete statistical background to religious offences would be uh, wrong of me. Yeah, because she's afraid and she doesn't want to talk about statistics. Let me give you some statistics. So the original blasphemy law was actually created by the British back in the 20s when they ruled over the Indian subcontinent. That was in response to some Hindu guy who had written a book that was a critique of Prophet Muhammad. So that happened in 1920s. So, you know, from 1920s till 1986... Only 14 cases of blasphemy are reported. You'd be asking, Harry, why are you mentioning 1986? Well, in 1986, Pakistani military dictator General Zaul Haq, he added the death penalty to this existing blasphemy law. So from 1986 till 2020, now there have been 1,400 cases. 1,400 cases. So from 14 cases, it's gone to 1,400 cases after adding the death penalty. What does that tell you? That tells you that either people were not committing blasphemy before the death penalty was added, or people were just not so butthurt over blasphemy and they were not interpreting everything as blasphemy. Either way, that was a bad decision to add the death penalty. And these are the hardcore statistics. And there's another statistic as well. In Pakistan's history, nearly 90 people have been lynched to death just after they got accused of blasphemy. They weren't convicted blasphemers 
people get lynched for blasphemy if they just get accused of it. And this woman would have become the 91st one. Frankly speaking, I'm not in a position to give the statistics when it comes to the entire country. However, I do know that it's one of the many calls that we receive. And it's one of the many offenses that are present in the country. And at times, they're factually correct. And at times, they're not. Again, she's being very careful when it comes to blasphemy. This is one Frankenstein monster that the Pakistani establishment has created that nobody wants to touch it. Nobody, even the military generals, don't want to touch it. She was never made to apologize. Yes, she was. Having said that, police did provide the platform where it could be discussed. Because once the issue came to the police station and the woman was safe, we took the men to Ichra police station because they'd surrounded the police station. So we said that, let's just talk. We told them to look at the shirt. They looked at the shirt and we were like, do you see any uh, Quranic verse? They said, no. And I was like, then what do you want? We're not going to register an FIR. We're not going to do it. Then they said that uh, we need to consult our religious scholar. I was like, go ahead, get your religious scholar. So there was no interference by the police when it I watched the videos, so that video is there. Let me actually play that to you. So as you can see, they said that no, we can't see any Quranic verses. So that's what they meant. They didn't literally say that, but they said that okay, since it looks similar to the Quranic verses, therefore you should still charge her for committing blasphemy. I know that the police didn't actually register this FIR first information report, but they, look how scared they were. Obviously, that would have gone up the chain of command, and they would have said, "No, bugger off. We can't really do that. That's so ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> but they tried their best. They said, if you think that they've committed blasphemy, even then you should charge them with blasphemy. It came to the interpretation of the shirt. Why would I, being a woman, force another woman to say something of this sort? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does make sense. You were scared. That's why you did it. You wanted to sweep it under the carpet. You were scared that, you know, this mob might get actually out of hand. And look, I don't blame her. I actually don't blame her. Yes, she was trying to cool things down, make it go away. It's like, oh, okay, you know what? We, we don't want to rock the boat because everyone's so angry. And as I said, nobody touches this issue of blasphemy. We already know that when we're dealing with such a situation, we've been attacked before. We have yeah. faced such mobs before. However, what, what kills us from inside when it comes to all of this is that people mostly overlook the fact that police plays a very key and integral role in ensuring the safety of people. Every week, on average, bury 10 to 11 people, bodies which are unidentified. We bury them with their own money. We give them coffin. We give them cloth. We ensure their burial. I don't understand the last comment. I think she was just talking about it generally. They bury a lot of people, meaning they see a lot of death and destruction around them. And I guess they're not thanked enough. But anyways, that's basically what happened. And I think because it happened in my birth town of Lahore, although I didn't live in that part, that's a very backward region. I think the moral of the story is that Pakistan is sinking further and further into this radicalism, into Islamism. Every second person you ask, they say the same thing that, oh, we need to bring in more Islam. That's the reason of our downfall. Whereas it's heartening to see that some of the Arab countries like uh, Saudi Arabia or the UAE, etc., they are letting go of Islam. They are modernizing themselves. Um, but Pakistan hasn't grown a spine. So um, that's why you're seeing this and you're going to keep seeing this. So I hope you liked today's video. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support my channel, then you can be my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan, or you can just buy me a coffee. Until next time, ta. If you'd like to support my work, you can become my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan, or you can simply buy me a coffee.